Hi everyone, it's Justine. This is your update on the renovation of my house in Provence. It's been a hot minute and a stressful couple of months. Now I can tell you what this was all about and more importantly, I can show you what happened so far. Last year, I requested a so-called building permit. It's a document that you need in France as soon as you want to change something that is visible from the outside. So if you want to do something to the doors, change windows, do something to the roof, add windows, all that kind of things, you need uh, this kind of authorization. It takes five months. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. First big win. And all the things listed in that request, in that form that I asked for, I got. Then I took a break from that project because I was in the final sprint of launching my handbag collection. I don't know if you saw that, for instance, on Instagram, but I went to Portugal, spent several weeks at the factory there, working on the prototypes. I stayed there during production start to make sure that there is no issue or roadblock. That means extremely full days and quite a bit of pressure. I couldn't do that kind of project and oversee a house renovation in France at the same time. Something had to give. While I was in Portugal, I organized the photo shoot of the collection as well. The product photos were shot in Spain. Then I came back to France, that was in Q4, right in time for the last couple of weeks heading to the launch. Meanwhile, I wanted to start the reno from the top, aka starting with the roof. The house was not waterproof. If you've watched my previous vlog, you know it's been raining inside following the heat wave in the previous summer. Long story. I link that vlog here and down below in the video description if you've missed it. It's entertaining, let's put it that way. But that's the past. <laughs> I found a carpenter specialized in roof renovations in old houses where the challenge is that they have zero 90 degree angles or straight lines. <laughs> so for a carpenter, it's a bit of a nightmare, but this one specializes in carpentry and masonry with traditional methods. So he was absolutely perfect for the job. I did not have an interior designer yet at that time. So I took on the role of the main contractor, Maître d'oeuvre in French, which is quite a bet. So I was waiting for them to finish their project before mine. And then suddenly the weather was right and everything was right. And they said, we're starting next Monday. <laughs> I had one weekend left to empty the entire upper floor and bring everything downstairs. Emma doesn't like it here. She's not amused by this situation. This is Emma. Yeah, she has a name. Within a couple of days, the upper floor was turned into a hot mess. Like I underestimated how much dust that thing produces. The carpenter and his team broke all the double ceilings, brought down all the insulation, the metal structure, basically some of the main beams carrying the entire roof, like beams, like, like this, huge beams, were damaged or had some mold or humidity and they had to be replaced. So basically everything had to go. And I really wanted to document that process. I hope I did it right, because I want to have photos before and after, and I absolutely put them on the wall once it's over framed. <laughs> There was one moment when I panicked a little bit. <sighs> That's when the roof was completely gone. It was November. It's like under the stars and all that. <laughs> yeah. Everything is pretty much gone. They're not only redoing the tiles, the layer underneath, which is waterproof. They're also redoing the entire wooden structure. So everything you see here the little wood and also the big beams, like they're changing everything. Look, it's like sleeping under the stars, <laughs> literally <laughs> in the house. <laughs> and then there was a Friday when the carpenter said, look, we're not going to be able to finish the cover for this and that part of the roof by tonight. So we'll protect the floor and hope it doesn't rain this weekend. By that time, it was December. How would you like the word hope in that context? I remember I was like, yeah, let's really hope then. Huh? <laughs> it gets worse. <laughs> that was okay. The floor was wet, but at least it didn't rain in the lower floor. So I guess that's something. The rebuilding itself went a-okay, super well. Now the wooden structure is brand new. The entire upper floor has tilting windows in the ceilings. Let me tell you. It's fabulous, the amount of additional light that these bring. The upper floor used to be kind of an attic, and now it's like an actual floor. It's amazing, isn't it? 
like it's not even noon it's not the best time of the day to have the maximum light but like nobody's gonna need to turn on artificial light in here until the sun goes down i'm getting excited now <laughs> another really cool thing i'm in love with is the new terrace roof and here i'm gonna have to switch cameras and take you with me outside so i can show you in situation okay i'm outside and if you see behind me the vine is growing mad it's spring it's spring it's official so let's deal with this in front of me okay you probably remember this part of the terrace from our previous vlog the roof used to stop exactly where this wall is and here where we now have one roof we had two different roofs with different angles and problems with water evacuation and all that stuff this is all solved so now i'm going inside you know this covered terrace already the problem was this roof was super heavy and the plan from the initial architects was that when i come out of this house here i'm under a covered roof which didn't exist but that was the plan and the first thing that the carpenter said when he saw these plans the architects are not in charge anymore see my previous vlog the carpenter said look if we make the ceiling here hang out so much higher the roof it's gonna bend and break unless we add a pillar what i then said was okay this terrace here that we're not using is becoming a room we need this room to have as much light as possible so add a pillar build the covered roof structure here but make sure that this room still gets all the light and i don't want to see any ugly materials once it's finished so you should only see wood and tiles i don't want to see the modern construction materials in between um, they should be completely hidden to respect the nature and the history of the house and then he conceived and built this which I think is amazing. So there is a support pillar that was absolutely required. And there you see nothing. You see only the wood and the tiles. These tiles are already secondhand. So by the time the wood ages a little bit, you won't be able to tell that this structure is in fact new. Underneath, same thing, you only see the wood. So in like a couple of years, this will look like it has always been there and it's part of the initial house. Love it. So that's for the new amazing terrace roof. But there is more. This is the lower floor, which you know from my last vlog. And above it is the upper floor. And you can tell from the stones that look different here, we in fact changed the angle of that roof to elevate the ceiling height in the upper floor. Let's go upstairs and I will show you. So I'm going up these stairs, which you know, still dusty. Yeah, yeah, it takes a while to get back under control. <laughs> Here used to be a dark corridor. You can see how low the ceiling was. I had to bend my head in order to go through that door and now we gain like what 50 centimeters or something in height this is where the ceiling was and you you have to imagine that the beams were lower than this so the beams used to be like here for me and i had to do like this to go through whereas now i have like so much more space really nice so it's actually adding square meters to the house um metre carré habitable, livable square meters, whatever, like the legal definition, um, in all this area here. And it's a whole new space that can be designed. And it's amazing because now you can walk through this entire area without hurting your head. And this is a part of the house that you don't know yet, but there are a few more steps at the end of the corridor that lead up to more rooms this was completely an attic because all the doors were way too low but now it's an actual floor well it looks like a battlefield granted <laughs> but it's because these walls are gonna leave they're very light built and they're not durable at all so we're gonna remove the carpet 
we're gonna remove all the walls, the shelves, everything basically. <laughs> yeah. So much space above the head. I couldn't film in this area before because it was dark, dark, like it was an attic. And these Velux windows are like, hello. <laughs> bringing so much value to the house, so much. Like, if you appreciate daylight in the area where you live, like, you know what I'm talking about. Let me go to my office real quick to show you so that you can see the difference. 100% <laughs> chances that you do see a difference. <laughs> Look at that. Ha! And this is the initial window. These are windows that already existed. This is new. Imagine, I can work in here, I can film in here. It's a different life in this room. Fantastic. That's the former height of the ceiling, by the way. Like they covered square, horizontal, with the double ceilings, instead of using the ceiling height that's there. So I was like, okay, Bring everything down. We're gonna increase the ceiling heights because there is all this space. So in a nutshell, if there's one thing to remember from this vlog, it's this. The upper floor used to be attics, attics, attics. Um, not nice to be in, dark. Hmm. And now it's like a whole new floor. This is why I needed a building permit, obviously, because we changed quite a bit. I say we, I mean the carpenters and the people who do it. It's not actually me doing it. <laughs> I just observe, ask questions and anticipate issues wherever I can. Not always. Um, I just feel very emotionally involved in that project. <laughs> you know what I mean. Now we're just waiting for the rain <laughs> to test if everything is waterproof. So if there are leaks between the roof and the wall, between a window and the roof, this kind of thing. But other than this, we are extremely close to completely finishing the outer shell. All right, let's go back downstairs. Okay, <laughs> back to the living room now. <laughs> the next step, which is not sorted at all, is the inside of the house. And to be honest, I'm still looking for my unicorn interior designer, the thing that I explained in the previous video. It's not easy. If you know somebody who is based in Provence, who is great at showing visually their vision and their ideas, because I'm a visual person, I need that. And who has experience in house renovations, please get in touch, send me an email, a DM, send me the account on Instagram of that person. I'm interested and looking. There have been some interviews with potential candidates in the region. Still haven't found the right fit. One of them, he sent me, he sent me the exact super detailed plans of the house of the past client of his. He included the contact data, the exact name, the exact address. I was like, whoa, do you have their permission to send me this? Like, I wouldn't want my data address, the plans of my house to be sent to people I don't know, right? I don't know about you, but like, I, I need my privacy to stay private. <laughs> Speaking of privacy, this video is brought to you by my sponsor, Surfshark VPN. A virtual private network, concretely, is an app which you have on your computer. It keeps what you're doing online private by encrypting the data that you send and that you receive. So if you're using a public Wi-Fi without a VPN, they could be storing data about all the websites you visited and your download history, and you would not know. Using a VPN keeps you safe from all that tracking. It's a good habit to get into. And then you have the additional perks. For instance, you can VPN yourself to a country where plane tickets are cheaper, where Amazon deals are better. Because yes, you get shown different prices based on which country you're searching from. Another tip. Right now I'm in France. I can teleport myself to Canada, <laughs> where my favorite streaming platform happens to have a bigger movie library. Don't tell them I told you. <laughs> if you want to protect your privacy, get Surfshark using the link down below and with the code Justine Lecomte, you'll get an extra three months for free. And so you know, you can use one subscription for all the devices you have at home. Computers, phones, tablets. 
thumbs up if you enjoyed this vlog thank you very much they say the roof is the biggest chunk and also the biggest budget in the renovation i hope that's true i hope the rest will be a walk through the park as they say <laughs> right <laughs> i'll see you in the next one and until then take care